Hello, walkers, and welcome to Rome, Italy. Uh, I am going to be just sort of wandering around and walking and exploring today. My name is Henry. <clears throat> I will be your co-explorer, your co-discoverer, your proxy walker today. It's a rainy, intermittent rainy day here in Rome. Uh, I've got an umbrella, so we should be okay. Uh, and we're just going to discover awesome things. <clears throat> it is uh, 10.30 in the morning, 64 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 16 degrees Celsius, uh, 18 degrees Celsius. I just looked that up. I can't remember. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, and it's November. Uh, and what a beautiful... As you may have guessed, we are going to start here in Piazza Navona. Now, if you're new to the channel... Um, thank you for joining us but I don't I'm not an expert guide here so I will call out things that I see that are interesting things that I know or think I know and I always welcome additions and corrections and thoughts and memories in the comments section I love interacting with you guys in that section um, and uh, yeah so let's start this walk you know it's, uh, I have, this is my third time in Rome in the last, uh, th maybe fourth time in Rome in the last 30 years. <clears throat> Twice in, uh, the 90s, once in the early 2000s, and now, now, and now today. <laughs> uh, we're capping off our awesome three-month trip to Italy. It's been fantastic. I love this country. It is so beautiful. So much to offer. I am looking forward to getting home to the States and uh, where things are easy and comfortable. Not that they're not easy here, but definitely, um, you know, when you don't know all the details and the etiquettes and the language <laughs> or the, uh, you got to figure out how to get from one place to the other. It's, uh, it's part of the fun, but it's also it takes a certain amount of mental energy. Uh, this is, of course, the center of Piazza Navona and I don't know the details on this fountain, sorry, but uh, look them up or add in the comment section below. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. I really do appreciate your support. If you'd like to learn more about that, um, check the, uh, the description below of this video. And then if uh, you're not into that, it's fine, uh, but I would welcome a subscription click on that subscribe button uh, all that helps me uh, helps me stand out for you too right so one of the things that I love about Rome is uh, I was thinking I've, I'll share a lot of my thoughts along the way um, first of all I would if you're going to Italy I would definitely end on Rome it is amazing um, and uh, switch over some of my apps here. Um, the reason it's amazing, one, it's the history, right? And it's not that other places like Naples and Florence and Venice and Milan don't have history. They absolutely do. Here it is around, literally around every corner. Um, you know, some of these, we were on a food tour last night with Devour Tours, which was awesome walking around a different neighborhood, and uh, I'm just gonna circle around this fountain here. Um, you know, and you'd see a bakery inside a shop with the top has all this Roman uh, marble inscriptions on top, like from ancient Rome, and then um, above that is sort of a Renaissance era building <laughs> that they built on top of it. And then you round a corner and there's some ancient ruin uh, from back in the day. And it's, uh, uh, and the, um, you know, and it's, it's just, it's just an onslaught of beautiful architecture like this church, which I think is a church and, um, ancient civilizations. But there's also this sort of cafe culture, this food culture that's amazing. Um, and 
the vibe here is it's a lot of vitality, a lot of energy, but it's not not like overzealous, it's not in your face, it's just a sort of positive energy, I feel. That's my experience. Um, and it's just, uh, it's a fantastic city. And it's inc the center is incredibly walkable, it's big, um, but you can walk pretty much everywhere. Um, and within half an hour, uh, and then if you don't want to do that, you can catch a bus or a taxi. Look at this view. Palazzo Giustiani, president of the Senate. The traffic here is infamous, and obviously we're not here in high season, so it's probably a little lower, but uh, even still, it's not nearly, I mean, I don't, wouldn't want to drive here personally, but it's not nearly as intimidating as a pedestrian as you might think. Every, the drivers seem to be very respectful of pedestrians and bicyclists and other drivers in terms of, you know, they're all pretty careful. Uh, you know, you don't want to just blindly step out into a street, but it's, uh, there's no road rage that I've seen. Not rage, definitely some loud voices occasionally. We were, we caught a taxi from the train station here because we had all our bags and there was a tourist group ahead of us and in this narrow, pretty narrow road. And normally people will move off to the side and let, let the car pass and these younger folks were just not doing that and the taxi driver was not having it. Okay, so this is the Chiesa Santa Luigi di Francesi here, right? So literally a block and a half off of um, Piazza Navona, one of the, I think it's the biggest piazza in Rome. Uh, maybe not the biggest, but uh, one of the most celebrated. I will also tell you, I have not yet found my sense of direction it's so big here that uh, definitely download your Google Maps and have cell service. It helps a lot. Um, or some sort of mapping software, anyway. We've had a lot of heavy rain this morning, and um, the cobblestones are kind of slick, but also shiny. Up here on the left is Cara 4 um, or Cara 4 Express, and that's uh, like Conad or there's another one, um, Coop, that is a grocery store. You, of course, have a lot of tourism-based uh, stores with stuff to take home with you but you also have all these little stores sometimes they'll have artisans sometimes there'll be a bookstore here's a coop right here um, and uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty cool to see all that mixed in here so there was a gentleman back at the fountains that was trying to engage with me. Um, 
and that's kind of a thing they do. Some, I don't know how to describe it. They're not trying to defraud you or anything, but they are trying to get money, which I respect. I don't know if you know this, but this is the Pantheon. And it's an ancient temple turned into a modern church. Not modern, but a contemporary church. And got this fountain here as well. Uh, entry to the Pantheon is free. Let's see if we can go in here. Uh, and they're open till 7 p.m. But they close the doors a little bit before that. Last entrance is at 6.45. can be slick here. centuries, this was the largest domed structure in the Western world. There is a hole in the top, and so they have the center roped off for safety because it rain gets in. You'll see evidence that it's a church with a lot of the altars and paintings and artwork that is adorns the walls. Apparently the interior of the dome used to be covered in gold. It's hard to oh, take a look at the scale here as we pan down to see people, right? So the people on the far side give you an idea of how truly large this place is. And to think they you know, 2,000, 3,000 years ago. I don't know when it was built exactly, but just amazing. And it's called the Pantheon because uh, and you'll see a, the church altar off to the right here. Uh, it's called the Pantheon because in the, originally it was meant to celebrate all the gods. And notice all the marble. It's amazing how intact this place was. And it was probably, this is my own theory here, that it was maintained this way because it was turned into a church. After the fall of the Roman Empire, Rome eventually became the center of the Christian world. And, um, and I assume this was take, became a church soon. And otherwise, a lot of these buildings were pilfered uh, for building materials. Because the volunteers here are letting the little girl go into the middle area just to see it. That's super cool. Love that sense of humanity. Look how high this is. Now, you notice all the marble. Keep that in mind. Oh, this is just... Look at the scale again. Outside here. It's just, it's awe inspiring to me to be here. 
hope it is to you too. But you see this brick on the outside? I believe that was all originally covered in marble, as you can see sort of on this outside here. The detail that has withstood the ages and the weather and everything humanity has thrown at it is fantastic. got of course cafes here. Um, here I have to go this way for our next stop. Get a good view. Absolutely fantastic. All right. Back to the narrow streets. Uh, you notice, you'll see every once in a while, um, these uh, scooter shares. I can't remember what name it's called, Free Ride or something. And so those are available. They have e bikes that you can, um, e bike, bike share. That you can send. Here's a jewelry shop. swing you around too quickly. Um, here's a couple of the ride share bikes, Lime and Tier, T-I-E-R, looks like. I don't know. They don't seem to have uh, shocks on them, so it might be a little bumpy ride. But still, another great way to get around the city. This big band coming through these narrow streets. They have skills. Oh, cool, we're gonna see some, maybe some guys in uh, uniform here. Looks like possibly carabinieri or military. part of work. We hiked or tried to hike the seven hills of Rome yesterday, one of which is in um, uh, the Forum, um, and one of which is uh, in the Presidential Palace, and one of which is um, in another restricted area. Oh yeah, it's a uh, the Ministry of the Interior. So we got close, but it was. Here's another amazing church, y'all. these little side streets, piazzas. We are in Piazza di Santa Ignazio. And I don't know what church that is. I'm gonna guess it's Santa Ignazio. turn or missed a turn. Luckily we can remedy that. So it's mid-November and there 
a lot of the city is dedicating or decorating, I guess, for Natale, the Christmas season. I think is what these lights along this restaurant up here are. Buongiorno. guy stopped waved and poured and he's like no go ahead so, uh, this is via del corso that we just crossed this is an information tourist information kiosk that we're passing Missed a, missed a turn again. That's right. The whole city's like this. It's just it's these beautiful, amazing old buildings. I don't want to say the whole city, but the central area for sure. Occasionally you'll see some wear and tear, but otherwise it's really nice. to even show this, but oh, look at this little brain team. Smart cars, a lot of little smart cars. Two person uh, cars. Some of them are electric, some of them are just really uh, fuel efficient. Now, we took this food tour last night. It was fantastic. Um, one of the things we learned was uh, gelato is not really just a dessert here. It's any time of day uh, from mid-morning on. It's also got less fat and sugar in most cases than ice cream. So you can enjoy a little, maybe not guilt-free, but... Um, and oh, and the fruit ones apparently are vegan. So. Oh. Um, you can see the current exchange rates for the euro against other currencies. Those are probably not ideal. I think I read that it's a dollar eight per euro, or a dollar. Uh, yeah, that's right. So, you get a lot of. We are approaching one of the most famous fountains in the world. Uh, and you're going to probably recognize it immediately. It is, of course, the Trevi Fountain, built in the 18th century, the 1700s, as part of this palazzo. Definitely a constant police presence here to deter, try to deter pickpockets, which is one of the reasons it's famous, I think. Um, and this was designed by Nicola Salvi. Um, let's just take a walk. 
Oh. Yesterday, the other evening, we could get down into this lower level area, but it seems to be cordoned off now. Uh, if you dip your hands in that fountain, they will blow a whistle at you. Uh, they do not like you getting anywhere near being inside the fountain. You can sit on the edge and get a picture taken, as so many people are doing. You can see kind of the crowds, and it's actually pretty late right now. I believe in the summer, it's, you know, it's wall to wall. It really is beautiful, the colors of the water, and um, I wish we could get a little closer because it's, it's such a combination of this organic looking rock and carved uh, marble and whatever the other, the rest of the rock is. And I can't remember the name of the family whose palazzo that is, who paid for it. People are having a lot of fun here. Um, I mentioned one of the people in Piazza Novona, and I kind of got taken in by this the other day, but they'll say, hello, how are you? Good to meet you. Where are you from? Trying to engage with you. And then as soon as you start to engage, uh, they'll tell you from they're from wherever you are or near there and uh, give you a bracelet or something. And then they're using your sense of guilt to not... Uh, not take a gift without returning a gift, and then they'll try to talk you up on how much. I ended up giving up five euros, giving back a belt this guy gave me. Uh, and I'm just going to explain my own personal take on that. One, I think they're primarily migrants, right? So they're just trying to make a buck. They're not trying to steal anything. Um, so. Honestly, I'd rather just give them some money than uh, than take the the junk. And I, you know, I don't like the the guilt. None of us do. But um, anyway, uh, they are not uh, particularly shy. So um, be prepared for that kind of thing. Um, you know, I support people trying to make a better life for themselves. So. All right. A lot of people busking in various ways as well, especially once you get over by the Colosseum. Uh, there's a long road there along the Forum and Colosseum, and every 100 yards, 100 meters or so, there's somebody playing guitar in public, trying to make a little money. And as we see, when we eventually do get over to the Coliseum, we're not going there on this walk, uh, you will see that um, there are a myriad of people trying to sell tours. Um, and they're pretty, uh, they're not too aggressive. At least I didn't find them to be so. Every morning, apparently, various places around the city, look at this, I love, mm -hmm this the way they have some of these buildings have these vines growing all along the walls it adds so much i said that was this naples well or somewhere it adds so much um adds a little organic nature to what is a otherwise stone city you know there's just not a lot of plant life here but i was saying what is this i was uh saying that, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the markets. Um, every morning there's a produce market 
and I think there's two in the old center and they tend to apparently um, focus a little bit more on tourist type stuff, right? So uh, souvenirs and that sort of thing. Um, more power to them. But a lot of you know locals will buy their produce there, which is I think pretty cool. So this is Vicolo di Maroniti, and Vicolo, I believe, is um, or Vico or Vicolo is alley. Okay, so I'm gonna look for and show you a coffee bar soon. Um, this is a Bottega Trevi. Um, we are, I'll show it to you soon. But anyway, uh, on this food tour, such a great tour uh, and such a cool way to learn stuff. Um, we ate a lot of great food for one, and then um, learned a lot too. So one of the things was that coffee culture here is, uh, coffee means espresso, cafe means espresso. Um, and a lot of times it's traditional, to, you know, it goes, it's a shot, they don't shoot it, they sip at it, but it's still pretty quick, because it's not a lot, right? It's like an ounce. Um, and, Uh, so a lot of times they'll say, hey, do you want a coffee? To their friends or associates. And the etiquette around that is um, yes. And then if you, uh, then they're not offering you a cappuccino. They're not offering you a latte. <laughs> it's an espresso because an espresso is one euro. Um, and to then upgrade afterwards is considered rude. Um, and then in Naples, there's this thing called the Cafe Suspeso. So you can pay forward for somebody that maybe can't afford a coffee and they'll, you just pay. She, our guide said uh, <clears throat> that, you know, it's a one euro. So you give an extra euro and tell them, I think it's a, Say when a cafe is espresso, and then people that maybe can't afford it can come in and ask, and if they've got one on account, they'll provide it. It's kind of a neat community thing that I think I don't know. I think it's got to add something to the community and the community spirit. Ooh, these guys had pizza. We're going up here to. I think Via di San Andrea della Frate. Trying to use my Italian accent. Esercito is um, army. That's what that says. And they have various outposts around, usually around important buildings. Um, they've got. Uh, this is a political party. Looks like. Let's keep looking for a bar too. These shops are so small and I don't want to just whip around the camera that I end up passing them before I notice that there uh, that there's something I want to share with you guys. But I'm gonna do a little better. That's the Convento dei Padri Minimi di San Francesco da Paola. This is Via di Capo La Case, which I believe translates to Head of the Houses. Here's the Lazio style official store. So Lazio is the Rome soccer team, football team. Yeah. 
lot of uh, clothing stores here. Definitely some stylish folks in and around Rome. Whoops, car coming. There's a big tour group. This cargo bike. Okay, here's a little pizza shop. <laughs> here's another one of these iconic uh, vine strewn stores and buildings. Love it. Hmm. This is Piazza di Spagna. So I'm going to let you think about where we might be headed. This is the Virgin Mary, but I'm not sure. Oh, look, it's great light. It's interesting how the army always seems to wear drive Jeeps. American made Jeeps. I believe this is the current or old Spanish embassy. I'm doing a little work on this building. Some high end fashion going on here. Here we have arrived at the Spanish Steps. Famous Spanish Steps, of which you are not allowed to sit. So at the top of the steps is, um, I believe a church, but also one of several Egyptian obelisks around the city. And of course, we've got this beautiful fountain here. I'll get a little closer look at that. So you can smell uh, people roasting chestnuts on the corner. Babington's Tea Shop over there. I just want to show you the uh, roasting chestnuts real quick. They smell awesome. I've had them before. I don't know that I particularly remember enjoying the actual eating of them. Uh, correct me if you think, if you like them, but um, uh, they do smell good, that's for sure just like that song promises. Um, so we're gonna head up the steps, but if you were to go to the left here, you would continue on to Piazza del Popolo. And we are actually going to head that way on another walk. For now, let's go up to the top 
and we'll turn around and get the view from there. Everybody getting their photos, their grams. We just passed a tour guide giving their spiel. And I want to um, sing the praises of tours and benefits um, of getting a guide. We have almost never regretted the decision. It can be a little pricey, but man, it really, you get so much more out of a visit to a place, especially if your time is limited, if you get a guide, especially a small group tour or personal guide. Quick look, and then we'll continue on up. How would you like to live in one of these buildings? Absolutely beautiful, but man, I bet it would be, the crowds would be a bit of a challenge. But maybe that's me. This church is the Trinità dei de Monti. There's a sign right there. One of the reasons that I wanted to come up here to show you this view, of course. There's a metro stop. There is a metro here in Rome. But the view is amazing. And you see this near dome. And in the distance, you see another dome. And that other dome is St. Peter's. And hopefully, I'll be able to show you guys eventually the inside of that. Not the best view of St. Peter's. Look at these beautiful, beautiful buildings. Ah, oh, hope this wind noise isn't too bad. Um, Okay, we're 43 minutes. I thought we were gonna make it a little longer, like go a little further, but there's so much to see here and do here. The next video that I do is gonna be probably silent. <clears throat> uh, I did a few of those in Naples, did one in Montepulciano. Um, they're actually a little bit more work for me on the back end because I gotta go through and do a lot of research and look stuff up and provide lots of interesting facts and insights to you. Uh, but I'm sort of trying those out to see how they work. Uh, so come back, check out those, because we got lots of others where there's talking, and if you enjoy that. And we'll have some uh, non-talking if you enjoy that. And we will see you again. Until then, from Rome, Italy, keep on stepping. <laughs>